Now, the U.S. Africa Command, or AFRICOM, was created less than a decade ago to better focus U.S. military engagement on the African continent. Oh, despite the vast size of Africa, it is America's smallest military command. For more insight into the AFRICOM, we turn to VOA's Kala Bab, who joins us live via Skype from the Pentagon. Now, Kala, to begin with, AFRICOM is headquartered in Germany. Why is that the case? Well, that has to do with the history of the U.S. military and a little bit to do with the history of the African continent. If uh, you think about it, before AFRICOM was created in 2007, the African continent was covered by Pacific Command in the south, U.S. Central Command, which covers the Middle East now, was covering parts of Northeast Africa, and a big chunk of Africa was covered by European Command, and European Command for the U.S. military is based in Germany. So it just made it easier for the U.S. military to keep the base there in Germany. Now, the second reason is because they were very in tune, the U.S. military was very in tune with the history of the African continent. There's been a massive history of colonialism there, and the U.S. military did not want to imply in any way that they were there for any reason other than to help African nations defend themselves. Yes. So that was a very strategic move not to put it in the African continent and to keep a small footprint on the continent. Which is in Djibouti. Uh, what really is the major focus of AFRICOM? The major focus of AFRICOM is defense building. They had last year hundreds, over 600 different activities with different militaries from African nations, ranging on everything from how to load a C-130 aircraft to how to work under a civilian government authority. Um, as you know, they've also done things with humanitarian exercises to help in disasters. We saw that with the Ebola crisis recently. And then you've seen frequently, the U.S. is also supporting counterterrorism. You've seen that in Al-Shabaab. Uh, attacks in Somalia. You've seen that uh, in northern Africa with al-Qaeda. And the U.S. has also reached out to help against Boko Haram. When the girls were stolen, the U.S. sent in an anti-Boko um, anti Haram interdisciplinary team to help with communications and logistics and intelligence sharing there. Yeah. And, and uh, perhaps a little elaboration there. Uh, do, how, to what extent does the U.S. military really get, in, get involved, like in the counterterrorism uh, fight in Africa? Well, the U.S. military understands that African nations are sovereign nations, and they don't want to get involved unless they're asked. Uh, Pat Barnes, who's an AFRICOM spokesperson, said it to me this way. He says, we're not going to go where we're not asked to go. So they can help with Boko Haram uh, in, in Nigeria as long as they're asked. And I was speaking with some analysts, and they say now that the elections are over, um, maybe there will be more of a receptive nature to U.S. military support and getting the U.S. military there to help more to fight against Boko Haram. But uh, in Nigeria especially, there's a feeling that um, they don't want a foreign power to come in and help with something that is a local threat in their eyes. Mm -hmm. So it, it's a very, very fine line for the U.S. military to walk, but they okay. just want them to know that they're there for support. Well, Carla, thank you very much. Thank you, Vincent. Well, Carla Bab, uh, VOA, is, uh, uh, VOA joining us live via Skype from the Pentagon.